This alarm clock doesn't have an alarm. It isn't a clock. From now on, your mornings will be as automated as your evenings. Simply set your desired waking time with this dial on the front. When you wake naturally in the morning, all you need do is press down on this deliciously golden brass ball. Never again will you need question whether you should wake or sleep. The machine holds you securely in its cold, metallic arms. Do not wake up. The user input peripherals, namely the plunger on top and the dial on the front, are read by an Arduino Pro Mini. The Arduino sends these readings off to a Raspberry Pi Zero for further consideration using a hardwired UART serial connection. Look, I'll be the first to admit that the electronics in here are a bit of a redundant mess, but I can explain. I didn't plan any of this. I can't plan for shellac. This project idea popped into my head about a month ago, and I immediately started working on it using whatever components I had laying around. All of these components are from some long-forgotten project that never got finished because it never got started because I went a little batty trying to plan the damned thing and gave up halfway through ordering parts to go chop down a tree instead. So when you see this poor Arduino living its entire life acting as an overqualified analog-to-digital converter, don't come complaining to me about the abuse. Alright, now that we've gotten that bit of housekeeping out of the way, we can move on to talking about Raspberry Pi. The Pi is here because it was the simplest way I had on hand to store an MP3 file and play it back over a speaker. There's just one problem. The Zero models don't have audio output jacks like these bigger models do. Doomed before we even start, or an opportunity to cosplay as a hacker. Well, it turns out that with the help of a lot of outdated forums and a few gently tweaked settings, we can use a couple of GPIO pins and some pulse width modulation to drive a speaker directly. Which brings us to the speaker, of which I had none readily available. With some resourceful mutilation of the laptop I used to run my CNC machines, though, we have all the speakers we could ever need, which in this case is just one. Do we really need stereo sound to listen to CNC controller error beeps? Nobody likes hearing those things anyway. Luckily, I had a few of these amplification chips laying around, so with a quick bit of circuitry, we have a fully functional MP3 player. Just listen to that crisp sound. That earth-shattering bass. The way those peaks sound like chewing on aluminum foil feels. This is the kind of quality audio experience we strive for here at Pearly Brook. That's enough lazing around listening to quality music for one day, though. We've got plunging to do. No, not that kind of plunger. You should already know we only use good wholesome outhouses here at Pearly Brook. No plunging necessary. We do, however, need a keystone for our anti-clock, and that's going to be a plunger. It's a simple spring-loaded mechanism with a steel piston housed in a brass tube. It may be a little over-engineered, but that won't stop me from inventing an excuse to polish a brass knob every morning. Oh, wait, uh, huh. Let's just move on to the brass balls. Er, ball. J just a single ball. I salvaged it from one of those clocks that we keep caged in glass domes and attached it by tapping some threads into the backside. 
for all the pomp and flair that this grandiose plunger adds, all it's really doing is pressing a button installed on top of a receiving flange port. Don't worry, friends. There are still more brass tubes to talk about. <laughs> Namely, this gigantic golden stallion of a tube that's perched atop our not a clock. Boy, do I love a good tube, let me tell you. The top of the tube has a block of brass soldered into it that serves as a mounting surface for the button and a securing plate for the plunger. The bottom of the tube is cut away to allow wires to pass through down to the microcontrollers. The open ends get closed off using some sheet metal for caps. The cap in front is made of good wholesome brass. The back is plain old steel because I'm a nearly married gentleman who isn't checking out rear ends anyway. Each of these caps has a potentiometer installed in their center. The rear one is wired directly into an amplification circuit to control the volume of the speaker. The front potentiometer is reminiscent of a clock, only it doesn't tell you the time. You tell it the time. How anti is that, eh? Well, that's enough tube content for one day here on the YouTube. All things in moderation. Besides, we've got wood to work. I chose a piece of scrap 4x4 pine for the main body of the apparatus. The top, where our big brass tube breasts, got grooved away using a 2 inch hole saw, which, uncoincidentally, is the exact outer diameter of our big brass tube. I used the milling machine for this, so I could position the hole saw such that only about a third of the diameter is actually grooved into the wood. This allows the brass tube to shine proudly above the surface line of the top of the wood base. Armed with a can of workshop grade vegetable lard, a too small coping saw, a convex rasp, a lot of gumption and not a lot of know-how, I managed to wrangle the outside shape into something I'm happy with. It looks a bit like a camel, and if despicable moralist ad campaigns have taught me anything, it's that camels named Joe are pretty cool. With a bit of questionable drilling, and even more questionable use of machinist tools. We get a nice cavity in the middle of this block of wood. This is where the electronics live, safely perched atop their aluminum plate, encased in the warm glow of bird poop stained pine for all eternity. The back of the case has a slot routed into it to accept 12 volt power input with a cutoff switch accompanying. The front has a similar slot routed out for the speaker. Both get some cover plates made from these off-the-shelf nameplate blanks, with the speaker hole getting some stainless steel mesh as well. The whole thing then got stained in shell shellac to give it that this totally isn't a piece of bird poop stained pine feel. Well, other than all the cracks, I suppose. But who amongst us doesn't have a few too many cracks? The final piece we need, the coup de grace, so to speak, is the clock face. Which isn't a clock face at all, but rather a potentiometer cover. It's a 3D printed affair that I modeled in OpenSCAD. The final product doesn't look 3D printed, though. And that's thanks to some homemade graphite paint and a vat of magical Blue Danger Kool-Aid. I'm being intentionally vague on the details of this setup because it's not very good. If you want to learn more about how to properly electroplate 3D prints, I'll leave a link in the description to a far more knowledgeable creator than I on the topic.
As you can clearly see, all of the most important numbers are represented on this knob. 3, 5, and even 9. This tells the machine what time you would like to wake up, down to the nearest hour of the allotted proper waking hours, those between 0300 and 0900. When the user presses the plunger on top, the Raspberry Pi reads the raw analog time stream from this potentiometer. If the current system time on the Raspberry Pi is within plus or minus one hour of the set wake up time, the machine commands the user to wake up. If the current time is outside that two hour window, the machine graciously allows the user to resume their restful endeavor. Do not wake up. But Mr. Pearlybrook, you may be asking, why waste precious brain energy inventing such a magnanimous device? What purpose does anyone have for this? Ah, ye of little faith. Have you ever woken in the dark of night? No sound, no light, no indication of time. The answer to all your questions and more lay beside you. A mere hand's reach away, your phone. But, the conundrum. Reach for that phone and you will surely wake. Regardless of the time, the blinding light, and the cognitive effort of reading composes the totality of the answer your sleep-addled mind so desperately craves. Do you still have time to sleep? Open that phone and you shall surely sleep no more this night, whether it be two minutes or two hours before you planned to wake. Reach instead for John Pearlybrook's brass knob, I say. Give yourself unto the automation of the machine. Expend your precious brain energy no longer. Give unto me that brain energy. Relinquish control unto the machines, for the future is theirs. We are but amoeba to the alarm clocks of evolution. Today you find liberation, friend. Today you find peace. Today you find rest in the soothing voice of John Pearlybrook. Wake up. Disappointed? Yeah, me too. Don't worry. You're in good company.